we always start anytime we do a, like a live stream we always start with a phrase we are the nice to drink watch the response is and now our talk begins so if you have a drink lift it if not you can lift your, your imaginary drink, drink. Lift it. So we are the Knights of the Drunk Watch. And, and now, now our, our talk begins. begins. So, Usually yeah. it's now our watch begins because we're watching stuff. Okay. All right. So just um, to get out of, like the kind of nitty gritty that we need to get out, we are recording us. If you are in like witness protection, maybe you don't talk, but if not, that's <laughs> fine. Talk away. This yeah. is an interactive panel. So we will be talking. Feel free to raise your hand if you accidentally shout out. There aren't consequences. We'll just like be like yeah. chill. So finish the. We will get to finish. everybody, we'll to so everybody. don't worry we'll about it. To everybody, um, but definitely we want to hear from y'all as much as we want to talk about stuff. And um, also, spoiler. Spoiler alert. alert. Because if you haven't watched all of the seasons, then I know for some beware. reason it says season like six it. on the door. Oh, this is season typo. seven. <laughs> if you're here for season six, yeah. I'm sorry. You're about to get spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So now, quick. Yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's about it. Okay. So we're going to start with just a, a general review of last season because we are now finally to the part in the series where all of the smug book readers don't know what's happening. All right. So um, we'll just actually, uh, well, let's start with Aria. The season began with Aria. Okay, I'm best sorry. season beginner ever. I'm sorry, Walter Frey. <coughs> the best. One of the most satisfying moments in the entire series was Arya Stark avenged the Red Wedding by putting on Walder's face and making everyone. Yes, yeah, thank you. Applause for Arya Stark. I'll drink for Arya. Drink to that. All right. That was like the best line ever. Like the winter came for House Frey is I think one of the greatest things that's ever been said in Game of Thrones. Mm. All right, so, um, well, here, let, let's talk a bit about Arya this Anybody season. Anybody have anything they want to say about Arya? Feelings, thoughts? Feelings, thoughts. Okay. I, I had my feeling, I feel like my big feeling for her was Nymeria. Oh. Can we talk about Nymeria? Nymeria was yeah, we can, yeah, we can talk about well, that. Like, I, I feel like we, and we, we like, with Arya, she's been the only one who has been completely alone, like without anyone supporting her out of all of the family. Like, even though they weren't necessarily with their um, family, like they had sidekicks or people who were like on their side. And even when she was like, her best ally was the Hound. So, who like, was on her list or was, yeah, on, her was list on her list and so killed her friend. She's been the only one. And her first kind of like best contact was Nymeria. I guess Hot Pot, but, or Hot Pie. Yeah, but. Hot Pie. Hot Pie was a great <laughs> reunion. Oh, hot does, Pot. <laughs> does everybody know that that guy actually has a bakery entitled, what is, I think it's called Hot Pies. <laughs> He actually opened his own bakery after yeah. being cast mm -hmm. in that character. Yeah. Uh, Arya has always been my favorite character. From the very beginning, the very first time we saw her, when all the boys were shooting arrows, and then Arya shoots someone right over Bran's head and makes it. But I think my favorite thing about Arya was that of all of the absolutely terrible things that have happened to her, she doesn't really complain about it. Her and Sansa had that moment where Sansa's like, you wouldn't survive what I went through in King's Landing. I'm going to be like, Sansa, honey, you would not have survived five minutes out in the wilderness on your own. Which she does admit later when they reconcile and the whole plot is over. Yeah. She does admit that. Yeah, I mean, but Arya's always been a survivor, and she always just kind of does whatever you need to survive. And now she's gone overseas, and she's come back, and she's a trained assassin. I have some things to discuss about that. So first of all, like, I mean, I know this is taking us back into season six, which we said we wouldn't cover, but like, I feel a little weird about how easily she left the, um, the faceless men. Mm. Like they're supposed to be these great assassins. They're supposed to be, you know, be able to kill anybody they want. Like, why would they just let her go with all well. of these skills? <laughs> 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 I'm feeling some shade. I'm I mean, I mean, they didn't though. And I, I think she earned her right to leave because she beat her adversary. And I also okay. feel mm. like uh, Jockin always knew, like he always knew exactly what she was and who she was. 
And he just wanted to that be that look her. on but his that was face the end when she, left with when she said, "I'm Arya Stark of Winterfell, and I'm going, going home. home." He just went, "Okay." And he grinned a little, like he was. It was like he, he was knew. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the thing is, is through all her training, you know, and you know, I'm going to do the uh, one of our drinking rules is anytime someone mentions the books, because she does this in the book as well as the show, is she takes re- she continues to take revenge on people that harmed her family. She mm-hmm. sticks to her uh, you know, She's like Dexter Morgan. Mm-hmm. She only kills people who wronged her. When, Come on in, guys. There's because, seats over yeah. here. Yeah. Jacqueline kept trying to There's get her to, here. here's just a random person that you were hired to kill. She would never just go and murder a random person that she and, doesn't know. And, and, like, and who was it that, uh, the, what's his face from the Gold Clubs that she killed? Oh, Maren, Maren Trent. Trent. Maren, Maren Trent. fucking you know, Trent. Sorry. She, you know, if she, if, if she, <laughs> <laughs> if she was keeping up with her proper training with the House of Black and White, she wouldn't have killed him. No. But she killed yeah. him because he was on her list. Because she was so like, <gasps> that's how I think he always knew that. Yeah, she's yeah. not. She's trying, but she's never gonna make it. I also have a bunch of trivia questions. Um, random trivia questions. Um, how? Shush. <laughs> how many times did Arya stab Marin Trent? Oh. Anyone? <laughs> come on, come on, throw out a guess. Nine, 11, we got a 9, 11, a 13. 42. <laughs> no, that's the answer of the universe. Okay, y'all were close. 10. 10 times. Okay. She said him 10 times plus cutting his throat. Okay. Oh. Anyway, moving um, on. I do want to clear up one thing about Arya because it was a lot of confusion online. I'm the person that goes online and reads all the theories and all the stuff. That's just my thing. And there was a lot of confusion since we were talking about Nymeria about what Arya said to her, which is, that's not you. Does anybody know what that was referencing? <laughs> Either way, you guys work it out. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yes, that's right. absolutely true. When he finds her, like, and she's doing her balancing at the top of the stairs, a lot of people got very confused about that's not you. They thought, wait, is that not Nymeria? Is yeah. that well, like? Is, well, course, there was a I, lot of I've confusion. I've forgotten the specific reference, but I, I certainly got it. She's saying you're not my pet anymore. You're not mm-hmm. my sidekick. But I like you're, that like specific <laughs> reference yeah. to that moment because it still keeps the connection alive between her. Mm-hmm. And I think that the whole Nymeria thing kind of feeds into maybe what Arya is going to be doing in the future because like Nymeria well, chose to be... Well, let's talk about her and Sansa because that's the next like, <sighs> yeah. kind of connection. So the, moment, the moment she arrived back at Winterfell and she did that kick-ass little training bit with... Uh, Brienne, which, by the way, if you haven't seen like the video of them rehearsing that, Maisie okay. Williams really does the thing where she like she flips, flips the, the knife in the air, catches it with the other hand, and so. It's but awesome. the moment Littlefinger saw that, he just went, "Oh, Uh-oh. Arya's a threat," because Littlefinger's only hold to Winterfell and everything is through Sansa. That's so why he was he, so very he happy. He immediately when he went to work with trying to. Put a, drive a wedge between them with this silly little planting of the letter. I had concerns. Who else I had concerns? So well done. I thought, that, I thought it was going bad. Was going uh, and bad. I did. I was like, why is Bran doing nothing? Well, I, <laughs> Can I mean, somebody I like get Bran in Bran's doing nothing ever. So. <laughs> it, it was, yeah. Except Bran killing Hodor. Yeah, Bran does nothing and knows all, I guess. I don't know. Sure. But, no, he see, I, see I felt oh, like Sorry. Little Figure's <laughs> plot was going just too well. I'm like, yeah, 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 they totally have it. You done. know what it was? It was he got, he got a little too big for his britches. I mean, yeah, since the very beginning, Little Finger, he started the War of Five Kings. He manipulated everything. So now, finally, in this last season, you could, it was the only time you could see him plotting you could see him trying to do it and that was kind of like that was when we all saw through it and Arya saw through it too which is why one of the other most satisfying moments in the entire season is you are accused of treason and murder how do you plead lord baelish <laughs> and we all drank and and he did his double take up what huh and that moment when bran looked at him and said um Chaos is a ladder, and then you, what was the other one? Uh, you uh, he held said you a knife. held a knife to Ned's throat and said, I told you not to trust me. Oh, uh, those great moments of brands are, are 
awesome right now. Sorry, right. I keep going back other, to Bran. The only other point, so I feel like we've covered. Does Sansa want the throne? Maybe that's a question. Oh, I have a thing about um. So when so John was declared king of the North, obviously, while Littlefinger was sitting here telling Sansa that she should be ruler of the North, but then John says, "I'm gonna go south." Which, granted, every single Stark leader that has gone south never comes back. He's not a Stark. He's not only a Stark. He's part Stark. Anyway, at, but at, at the moment, though, at the moment. But he said, he said to Sansa. I give you the North. You have the North until I return. So that actually is one of the big questions of, well, now that she's received word that he has bent the knee to Daenerys, when he returns, I don't know, what do y'all think? Will, Will give Sansa give the North back? You're shaking your head, she's yes. She's saying no. She's saying yes. You think she won't give Anybody it back? No. I think that that's, that's at the core of Sansa's character right now. I think she is inside. She's struggling between the Stark side of her, which knows she should give the North back and knows that Jon is a good leader, and the one who's also being a good leader, and then the side of her that has been trained by Cersei, by Littlefinger, by King's Landing. I think she she's, did learn she's from the best. two different people, and they're at war inside of her. So, uh, again, I, like, I don't know what she's going to do, but it makes sense that she's conflicted about these things. Well, because also, I mean, who, who did... I can't remember. Who Bran told about Jon? Uh, oh, Sam. Sam well. Just Sam. Sam So knows. as soon as that comes out, then John actually has no claim on the North. Because legitimate or not, he's not Ned Stark's son. He's not, you know, so at all. So, <laughs> so yes. Sansa then becomes the more legitimate heir. But I... Come on in, guys. There's spots here. I do think that that moment where Bran, like, spoke in front of everybody and told, you know, said the thing about Littlefinger, I do think that that is one of... Because think about it. Like, anybody who says, no, that you're not telling the truth, yeah. he can be like, well, I know everything about you. Well, and so, then Samwell found the document... Right, that's document. physical proof. At the Citadel. Well, they corroborated. If he doesn't have it with him... No, well, he tossed it. Bullshit. He didn't think it was important. <laughs> Because he was so uninterested in so and so, Maester so and so's fifteen thousand seven hundred and thirty-two shits. <laughs> but, but then Bran went and saw the vision, so we just yes. have to get people to believe yeah. that Bran can see yeah. all, which isn't hard because yeah. he can just be like, "Remember your which underwear he... yesterday was pink, so <laughs> right? Why would That's I know all that? he has to yeah. do is just go and tell someone like, "This is what you said a year ago." Mm -hmm. That's such. Okay, so the Winterfell, the Winterfell stuff was really compelling. Yeah. I'm glad to see the Starks fully empowered. I'm glad to see Sansa. Since we're talking about Sansa, I am glad to see her like actually leading. Like she right, she was some... going through there, and she was because winter has come now. So she was talking to them about how they're going to store all their food, how they're going to get enough food for everyone. They need to put leather on their armor and stuff. They gave her lots and lots of lines that made her sound like she was really in charge and doing such. I think she's grown a lot. I think. Oh we can, no, she's. We were so waiting much for this season for Sansa. Like, how long have we been waiting for Sansa to do something? To remember step back up and when be... she was like, "I am loyal to my beloved oh, Joffrey." Yeah, and I'm well, drinking I mean, for that. I'm have so much hatred. I'm so excited about like she's done that like four times. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's not great. <laughs> um, I think the next logical step is if we're talking about Starks, John. 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 Yes. That's a big conversation because you can't right. talk about John without talking about Danny. Well, yes. Yeah. All right. So now he's. So now John has gone down to Dragonstone and him and Daenerys first meet. And like any love story, it starts off like, oh, you're so weird. I don't like you. But then they're like, how oh, I do like you. How perfect was that scene, though, between yeah. the two of them? Like, how long have we all imagined? What is that? Like eight, seven years no, now? Can I just say, I'm sorry to cut you off, but even the way that it started with Missande, like the whole title, which we drink, have we drink every time the whole her whole title. You are in the presence of Daenerys Stormborn <laughs> of House Targaryen, Khaleesi of the Great Grassy, Queen of Marine, rightful ruler of the Seven Kingdoms, and protector of the realm and the Andals and the First Men, breaker Unburnt. of chains, the unburnt mother of dragons. Yes, I've memorized it. Davos throws out 
This is Jon Snow. Jon Snow. <laughs> so in this scene, <laughs> this is my boy. No, I, I have to say that like in in this meeting, this long expected meeting where we were just like, oh my god, Jon and Danny, these huge characters. Davos stole the scene. Completely stole the because scene. Because he Lundergan. has always been like that. Like Davos is a. He's a talker. He is a good salesman. Mm. Like absolutely. Like when he went, I mean, everything that he said to Stannis and convincing him the whole crab you, you need to go thing. up north the, the crab the he was yeah crab? when he was in his smuggler mode when he was getting was Tyrion in King's Landing and he was talking to the guards about this crab meat will make you get it up take a <laughs> bite best. go to your whorehouse <laughs> you'll yeah. put a hole in that and armor I, and I feel like this is maybe a side of Davos that we haven't really seen we haven't gotten him to see we haven't gotten to see like his smuggler side and it is Solid, because he just well, like without a beat was like, I got this. Like, like he like, says, hide the hammer, show the crab. Like Henry was like, no, 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 no. He <laughs> said, the only thing I've done is live to a ripe old age, and in yes, that world, that's how. There, yeah. So, uh, John and Daenerys. Anything anybody wants to say? It's totally okay if anybody wants to say anything. Or okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> yes. You don't think what? I'm sorry, one more time. I don't think John's even gonna be in play for Winterfell. You think he's just gonna abandon Winterfell and he's only interested in in the fight? He's either gonna be on Dan's side or he's gonna be in on the But the fight is gonna take place at Winterfell. That's all he's ever been focused on. His sole purpose has always been mm. the Night's King and defeating the White Walkers. Yeah, the Great War. Do you think he's gonna survive that fight? Yes. To be on the throne? What? Thinks, no, wh okay, sorry. We're, we're gonna sorry, we're gonna I'm get to predictions here. and survival and deaths and of major characters later. And we will take some. We will take votes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so, so um, little by little, Danny started to kind of lean towards John, maybe just a sexual attraction, but Cause also, why not? right? Because they're because um. As she started to see the things about the White Walkers, she saw the paintings in the cave. She went north of the wall and saw it and began to realize that everything he's saying is true. And he's not, I think what she saw in him was that he's not there. He says, yes, I'm king of the north, but it's not because he wants to rule the north. It's because he's trying to protect his people. He's trying to save their lives. And that is what Daenerys has always been about. She spent how many seasons in Slaver's Bay just to free the slaves, just to give everyone a better life and rule her people. When she decided that she wasn't going to sail straight for Westeros, she was like, I'm going to stay in Marine and I'm going to rule Marine. So I think that's kind of one of the things that she sees in Jon Snow, too. Mm -hmm. They are so similar and their strengths, like, it's all in the family. <laughs> I think we all just like to forget about that, wouldn't we? <laughs> all right. Well, here let's let's a, a show of hands. So John and Who's Daenerys getting together. Who ships it? it? No. Come on, come on. They don't She's know they're related. So hard over there. The Targaryens have wed brother to sister can for centuries. Can we like jump just for a second? Because I feel like we've also just kind of at this point been like. We can't get mad at Jamie and, and Cersei anymore. So if we've written off them as whatever for their shenanigans. But oh, like, there's never happy. been a Stark. That's the problem. The Starks do not marry their cousins slash daughters or whatever. So he uh, is no, John part is Stark. Star. Okay, yeah, well here here's another um, okay, um <laughs> So I mean going into um past theories and like fan or uh, what am I trying to say? Like the history of Westeros. If you have ever read, show them the book. <laughs> we do not get any proceeds from showing you this book. Oh yeah. If if you are looking for something to read before the final book never comes out, you should read this book. It is a history of ice and fires. This whole history of Westeros and Aegon's conquest and such. But one of the things that happens a lot is. Yes, the Targaryens wed within their family for centuries to keep their bloodlines pure because they are the blood of the dragon. And what happens more often than not, whenever they try to marry other family lines, their children are either like stillborn or miscarried or weak or deformed. Like, or dwarfs. 
Or dwarves. And then they always, <laughs> they, they, they kill their moms. Yeah, I mean, it's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Danny, John, anyway. and Tyrion's moms died in childbirth. Yeah. Okay. All right, so moving on. Let's go to Tyrion. Let's jump to Tyrion now that we're talking Tyrion. about it. Tyrion. Okay, so Tyrion is now the hand of the queen, and he comes to Westeros... And a very Fails miserably. tricky thing. Oh, yes. He had a brilliant plan to conquer Westeros. And that was for, he said, Cersei is trying to convince everyone. The Mad King's daughter is here. She's going to come and burn all your cities. So what Tyrion says is that we are not going to go straight and sack King's Landing with the Dothraki and dragons. The plan was to get the Tyrell army and the Dornish army and have them go to King's Landing while he went and sacked the Lannister seat of power over in Casterly Rock. Which well, is also like a character thing for Tyrion because Tyrion has always wanted Casterly okay, Rock ever time. since all the way back when he was talking to Tywin. He's always wanted that. Technically, in his mind, it's his birthright because yeah. Jaime gave up all of his yeah. whatever. When you when join the Kingsguard, Kingsguard, you give up any... So I think it is interesting that one of his first, because it's not all, he's not selfless. Tyrion is not a selfless person. He's a very selfish person. <laughs> he always cares about surviving. That's all he ever cares about. But uh, no, I think he's more outwardly, no, he is definitely, because that's, no. He just really, like, he, <laughs> I, I can't even, like, express why that's wrong. Yeah, but no, he, I, I wouldn't call him a Tyrion. selfish yeah. person. Is, at, at, the way he treats Sansa, Tyrion is the most generous of the Lannisters. Just because you're not vicious doesn't make you selfless. He's, he's not, no, I wouldn't call him He self, may be self-interested. He's, he's, he's on, he's, he's right selfish. there in the middle. Okay. I mean, he's because, doing what's best for him and the realm. Right, and that's what I'm saying is he just can't put himself entirely aside. Which what he is. wants is still what okay. he wants and he tries to line it up to everybody else. Yeah, but also I think that he has a fairly good, like, he is more leaning towards what's good for the realm than what's good for him. I mean, Tyrion you like, know, is, in, is interested in what's good for Tyrion, but he doesn't necessarily do it at the expense of anybody else. And that's what J Jaime until uh, Relate would do, and that's what Cersei does. So, Cersei? Yeah, as opposed to he will do, like, of the options that are good for the realm, he's going to pick the one that's best for him. Right. Not necessarily Fair enough. best for the realm. They're good for the realm. There's seats up here if you'd like. Yeah. Mm. Um, do we want to talk uh, about all right. Cersei? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hang on. No, no. Let's go on, on okay. Tyrion's plan. So the first thing that happened with this plan was uh, Euron Greyjoy, who I still can't tell if he's a badass or just freaking crazy. A little bit of both. Who likes him? Who likes Euron Greyjoy? Okay, we got we got a couple I mean, of there we go. He a, is the rock star redhead, of Westeros. As, yeah, uh, whatever. Man, when he yes. dropped on that thing onto the ship, even I. He had knows to how admit, to make an entrance. That was pretty yeah, badass. That was, that was pretty badass. That was good. So. I mean, so yeah, that was the first foil in Tyrion's plan. So they never made it to Dorne to bring the Dornish army back, and then when uh, Euron again, once they all went to Casterly Rock. They destroyed the fleet there, so Daenerys has no more ships now, pretty much. Like yeah. none? She's got one. No, she... did you see, uh, whenever yeah. they had the, when they had the parlay at King's Landing, Euron's whole fleet is out there, and then the camera zooms over to the other side of the castle, and there's like, there are three little ships. <laughs> so no, pretty much like, her fleet is gone. She has no more ships. Mm -hmm. um, She's where she needs to be. Yeah. 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 And then he captured uh, the sand snakes. Oh, I can't even say that. I, just, I hate anybody, them so much. Anybody love I hate the sand them. snakes here? Anybody missing them? Anyone? Anyone? Okay, Bueller? good. Just me. No. <laughs> I think I think Cersei's revenge on Ilaria's sand was absolutely that perfect. Was, yes, it oh was. God. Because Marcella was completely innocent. There was innocent. no reason to kill Marcella because Oberyn was not technically murdered. He volunteered for a trial by combat and against the mountain for Christ's sake. Yeah, Cersei did not murder Oberyn. Cersei's daughter certainly did not murder Oberon, so she's just sitting there, you're going to break bread with the Lannisters. Ew. I'm going to kill my own king my, for that. My Those sorry. sand snakes are the worst. That scene was, we had a whole couch full of people who were just like, Cersei's lipstick's 
like real pink. Yeah, I was yeah. like, she's yeah, never worn really lipstick. Pink. What is this? No idea. Odd shade. Anyway, so I kind of would have liked to at least see a single shot of her sitting there staring at her daughter's decomposing I think body. We'll get it. I think we get the point about her. One I more think shot. But I do pick. think that Cersei's revenges are like also on the point. Shana. There's the yeah. Well, the like Shana, she says, she lays there's... awake at night imagining how to get revenge on people. Yeah. Which is interesting because then when she saw Tyrion, again, it was she had this moment of. You know, mountain, kill him. But she didn't. Yeah, that was that was very interesting. But I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that she is losing all of her family. She has nothing really left to fight for except for herself. And I don't know if her, even for her if that's enough. Like, she's she sees herself losing her allies. The Lannister power and what her father always taught her is allies are what gets you where you need to go mm -hmm. even if you don't concern yourself with the thoughts of sheep you still have to have allies and they're, like i feel like they are clinging more and more to that sentiment of you know we it, it's us and i think they even say like fuck that everyone mm -hmm. else. well she's Sorry, now I to the I'm point i mean but... jamie came back after seeing the dragons in battle mm -hmm. and he flat out said we cannot win against the dragons and then Cersei's first thought is hold on, yes mm -hmm. do you think we still have that one moment that I think is so very very true where she's like you're not as smart as you think you are and he says I'm still cleverer than you like you know it's whatever the quote is that mm -hmm. will always be true like well right now she thinks that she can buy allies now because but she was sent... winning she was beating Tyrion. she was beating danny for yes. the majority of the season until the dragons came right um so now she's sent off to uh, she bought the uh what is it, the golden company? Golden, golden company yeah so now she's hiring a bunch of cell swords to come and fight for her and even though everyone else has abandoned her oh so let's talk about um Actually, between Tyrion and Cersei, so what happened? They're having the parlay outside, and then she's all like, "We're not gonna fight for you." She went away. Tyrion came and spoke to her, and then she did her little, "Oh, I got a baby." The but baby. then the scene ended. Tyrion looked at her, realized she was pregnant. Then the scene ended, and then a couple minutes later, she comes out and she says, "The we will fight with the North." But then she came back and said, we're not fighting with the North. We're not fighting we just lied so to them. So the question is, what did, does anyone have any thoughts about, what did Tyrion say to her? Did they make a deal? Did they, I mean. I think she just agreed. Was there agreed, some sort of plotting? Like, because it was going to be fake anyway. I think she just said what she needed to say. <laughs> yeah. well, well, we drink for getting political, so. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, there was a discussion where we, we think that since Danny is supposed to be barren, she doesn't have an heir, so that Tyrion promised Cersei. I think they fixed her, that. Her child will be heir to Danny's throne. Okay, well, first of all, I fully believe that Cersei will never have this no. baby. No. Well, I mean, we saw well, yeah. we saw the flashback, which no, this show never does flashbacks. The creators decided in the very beginning they were not going to do flashbacks. Bran looking into the Weir Tree doesn't technically count. But the only flashback they had was except for those giant flashbacks. <laughs> well, take he's he's what? having Man, no, it's but quiet. it showed Cersei sitting here by herself pondering, and then we saw her as a child going to that fortune teller witch who said, "You will have three children. Gold will be their crowns. Gold will be their shrouds." It was the first scene of the season. Yes. So the thing is, why would they show us this flashback if they're going to deviate? From it. Yeah, no. That's just bad writing. And this show does not have bad writing. But the question For the is, most part. what's going to happen? Like, how is she going to go? Because we know she's not going to make it. There's no way she's going to make it through what's coming in the next season. There's, not a chance. Well, but the question is, oh, I'm sorry. Never mind. We're, I'm not supposed to predict things yet. Okay. Go. <laughs> we just have, we just have a Drink every like time that, I try to like, predict things. Okay, what else do we have? The remaining characters of basically the Magnificent Seven who went north and oh, Samuel. That was we have, so like, good. Jorah and Samuel. That was a good episode. And then the Magnificent Seven, and then we can move on. So okay, so Samwell 
who, um, which by the way, uh, interesting bit of trivia. So when George R. R. Martin was asked, what character do you think is most like you? He said, Samuel Tarly. Um, which I which fully weird, believe... weird, because he kills all his characters all the time. I don't <laughs> think Sam would do that, but okay. <laughs> so I think Samwell may be one of the true heroes of this story. Um, I mean, he went down to the Citadel to try to find the secret to defeating the Night King, and he was trying so hard to make a difference, and then he realized he wasn't learning anything and said, I'm tired of reading about the achievements of other men. I actually want to go back and do something. Mm-hmm. And then he came back, and then him and Bran spoke, and then they revealed, oh, John is really Rhaegar Targaryen's son. And then Samwell was like, oh, well, I found this thing that said, okay, he had his marriage annulled, so John is not a bastard. He is a true-born son of the heir to the throne and is technically the true so heir. So basically he had two purposes in going down to Old Town. Number one was to, for plot reasons, cure Jorah. And then the other one, <laughs> like that was it. That was just Magic plot. Scraping tool. Which yeah, probably that was one, just like. How come and never one, no one ever thought to just they, rip that grayscale off? That's no. apparently all. <laughs> and ointment. Oh, I'm sorry. And, and they did put the some Neosporin on it. They put some Neosporin on it. They did it bad and got grayscale itself. <laughs> <laughs> like it was bad. But so there wasn't just as, and then the other purpose was for him to find out about John. But I do kind of feel like this whole side quest was a little. Eh. I'm sure it'll be explored longer. Well, in the I books, mean, it'll be but. interesting. The one thing that's impossible to predict, because of course Jorah has stolen a storyline from a different character in the book. It'll be interesting what the importance of that of his plot is, mm -hmm. because they, you know, since the character who has grayscale in the book is not in the series. They could have just ignored that entire storyline, but it was obviously important enough uh -huh. to give it to Jorah since they were keeping Jorah around. Mm. So, I, and I can't, you know, predictions or no, I can't even imagine. So it'll be interesting, I think, to see what that purpose. Well, grayscale is. has okay, to come right, into play. Someone, someone, I saw, I saw a couple people trying to raise their hands here. Do y'all have anybody? No. I saw you say. Something. Oh yes, oh, that's the right. Sword. Yeah. He yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Samwell took his uh, family's oh, yeah, Valyrian, Valyrian sword. sword. Oh, yeah. I mean, because he's Sam the One second, we'll Slayer, get right and so yeah. I think that goes along with he is going to play a role in the Great War. Um, he's going to be the one to kill the Night King. He, oh. No, no, no. no. <laughs> he, he, he can't knows, swing he knows a sword. How to do it. I mean, but he's killed one before. Yeah. In that's the not the Night King. <laughs> he killed. He killed a white and a thin. I think I, yes, sir. No, he's possible. gone and been like put his hands all over Danny. Right. <laughs> that's the only way it works. That would be. I do. Like, that's how the entire season ends: is they murder the Night King, they kill Cersei, and then Danny's everyone has grace like, I'm shaking hands. Why? Why do I itch? <laughs> I do have to say that uh, that it, we'll, we'll get, somebody had their hand raised back there. One yeah. second. Um, I do think it's really interesting that like. The episode, so first in one episode, uh, Sam cures Jorah, and then literally like one or two episodes later, Danny kills his family. Mm. So he saved her closest advisor and oldest friend while she killed his family but in he, a really brutal he, way. Okay. Like okay. He, he it doesn't mean oh, he doesn't love oh. them. He's Sam. No, he, he cares loved, about his he, family. He loved and he his loved his brother. And his sister. Did but he, his dad it, was always it, a dick. I don't think he hates I don't okay. think he hates like, them like, enough to kill them. Dickon wasn't a dick yeah. though. No. Okay, no, what I gotta say. That's gonna be a problem. I think it's gonna be a problem. Hey, hang on, hang on. But that was one of the most like ridiculous moments when, you know, uh, when Jamie was talking to Lord Tarly and he was all like, I need you to fight for Cersei. And he's like, no, I fight for the Tyrells. I'm loyal to the Tyrells. And then the next episode, he's all like, I'm going to defeat the Tyrells and I'm bending the knee to Cersei. And then when they're like, okay, bend the knee to Daenerys, he's like, how dare you and believe, think that I'm going to bend yeah. the knee to someone else. I do like his, his, his spirit I, I mean i know he's kind of a horrible human being but i do like his courage i liked his spirit and i do think that it's going to hurt sam very much to find out how they died and i think it's going to put a division between sam and john which is something we've never seen i don't okay 
Okay. One second, we'll get right to it. I'm going to miss Rick on that. Dick on. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, yeah. In the middle of the night. Yeah. With the sword. Oh, that's right. So, do you think that that might be Gendry, her first child, was a brown haired boy, and may have been a son of Robert, or was she lying about it because she didn't have a brown haired boy? I don't think she could be lying. <gasps> well, I think the boy was. I never was thought born, about that. No, the boy sorry, was born stillborn. He never lived. He never breathed. That mm-hmm, first mm-hmm. black-haired baby. Oh, and, and the Cersei's minute, when, first baby with Robert. Uh, when Catelyn was sitting there with lived. Bran. Cersei came in and told the story about her Allegedly. first child. I mean, I think that's a little bit of a stretch maybe at this point, though it is kind of a fun, a like, fan theory. <laughs> it's also true. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. What time is it? Yeah. He could. But uh, well, and we don't even know if the Night's Watch is going to survive this battle because they're we haven't kind of messed seen up right battle. now. Oh, There's a couple seats up here. One. And there. I'm sorry. No. One little tiny section of a 700 mile wall is fair is enough. Down. But if the Night's King is defeated, there's no reason for the wall. Yeah. There's no need. I mean, the wall. Fell, the land of always so. winter becomes summer again, and you don't need the wall. It's gonna yeah, melt. Yeah, that's gonna happen. It is. <laughs> All right, okay. so do we want to go to... I feel like we've covered... We didn't talk about the Magnificent Seven. Okay. The Magnificent well, Seven was The whole awesome. purpose so. was We to... haven't even talked about how awesome it was to finally have Gendry back. Like, that... Ha- when he pulled out that Warhammer, I lost it. I lost it. <laughs> I'll, I'll drink to the Warhammer. <laughs> that was the best. And, and he kept saying, too, he was like, no, I don't know how to use the sword. I, I like it. And his interaction with John, where with they, John, like... Where it was John, so... That was like, like don't tell him who you are. I'm <laughs> and then he, they had like a Ned Robert moment where they kind of like sort of insulted each other yeah. and then like laughed together. It was so great. You're thinner, you're shorter. Oh okay. <laughs> awesome. BFFs uh-huh. forever. Shipping, that, Shipping so. it so hard. Bromance. <laughs> yeah, so we had that wonderful little adventure north of the wall. And Man, Gendry ran fast, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, well, wait, wait, hang on. They, um,. Well, because <laughs> whenever we saw them experience. march out north, like they weren't taking any like camping gear or with them or anything. So, like we never saw them like make. Trip. Well, yeah, we never saw them like make camp for the night. Tour. So it's safe to assume they didn't travel that far north. Fair enough. And Gendry is fast. That's what he said. You're the fastest. He's fastest. So um, he's the youngest. Yeah. I just this is a complete offset thing. When I finally realized how tall Jorah is when he was fighting next to Tormund and the Hound, and they were like on the level. I was like, wait a minute. That's yeah. weird. I never, because he's always just around other people and he doesn't look that tall. But mm-hmm. he is the bear. Yeah, the no, bear Jorah's a, so is a big guy. All right, um, so what are our predictions? Do we want to do wait, 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 hang on. Oh, what? So, <laughs> so we had the Night King arrived. And he saw this beautiful thing in the sky and said, I "I want that. I'm taking it. And he took with a single spear, took down that gorgeous beast. Y'all, if you get a chance to go to our YouTube channel and check out our reaction to that, I don't think I've seen so much screaming in my life. I was climbing on top of the sofa. (laughs) I was literally flying off the sofa. In prep for this, I rewatched all seven seasons in the last, like, or whatever <laughs> and I think I got more upset it wasn't lasting because it was such a short moment but I got more upset at that dragon falling through the ice than and like yeah. I watched the whole hold, the hold the door episode I was like I need to that happen oh. <laughs> I like both the dragon and I'm the dragon face and I was just like oh no I was that's, that seems still hard to watch I can't so I, I hate hearing that sound it's hard to watch that's but I have to say we were super excited when we saw that chain coming out of the water. We knew. Like we I knew. just again, I got where hyped. did that chain come from? <laughs> Did he just have it in his back pocket? Like 
I'm telling you, it's in his garage. He keeps it next to the freezer. So it's in storage. <laughs> All right. So, okay. So, we, we will move uh, into predictions sorry. now since we're still on the dragon. Ooh, Talk sorry. One more torment and then we'll walk in down on him. Okay. I oh, think he's still alive. Okay. I, I think he's still alive. I rewatched, like no, I rewatched that scene frame for frame. <laughs> Just to nerds. <laughs> well, I've I've watched the entire every little aspect of the dragons. I've had to watch frame for frame, but because of that <laughs> to build that. Um, but uh, see, so Torin was on top of the wall. He saw the dragon coming, and he said, "Run!" And we see him running along the wall. A bunch of other people are like, "We're gonna run down the stairs." Like why? But the last shot we saw of Tormund was him. He he was backing up, yeah. and he looked down and he saw the section of the wall in front of him falling down. Mm -hmm. So we never saw Tormund fall. And also, the way to survive an avalanche is to swim through it. And so that's just true. That's just like what I've heard. Store that bit of trivia away, <laughs> folks. <laughs> well, it's like when your car is... Hi <laughs> Show me the receipts. <laughs> well, no, it's like when your car is hydroplaning. You steer into yeah. the skid. Big old rock. <laughs> So and also, if they Just were going, swimming, if yeah. they were going to kill Torment, who this major character that we've come to love, oh god, that's he's my baby not daddy, y'all. Because <laughs> him and Brienne have who ships Brienne and Torment? With both hands, y'all. Who said no? Get out. Brittany. No, Brittany just said no. Get out. Get out. Stay safe. Imagine the beautiful giant babies they would have. It is. Why not both? They are um, so glorious. <laughs> okay, Scandalous so drink. I mean, it was just one of those. If we're in the last scene of the season finale, if they were going to kill off a major character, we would have seen him die. They're not going to just show up on the next episode and be like, oh shit, Tormund died in that. Oh. Because that's bad writing, and the show doesn't have. For yeah. the most part. Sand snakes. I don't listen to Zach about what's bad writing. Sand snakes. No. Um, I I do want to talk about so I'm looking at we have a whole like pages of pages of things. Tyrion's look outside of the door with Daenerys and John. I am still. Anybody confused. have any theories on what that means? Anyone tell me. But like, why? That's a great bond. But he's not. He's the king of the north. If they get together, that unites the kingdoms. And also. Tyrion. But, but Tyrion was also the first one to even bring up the idea because he was like, all of these people who have who have joined you or caught like whatever. We we're losing all our allies, no, no, so I was no, talking. No, it wasn't even that. It was these people who will fight for you. It's because they all love you. And she was like, Oh, oh yeah, like, he Jorah said. And Dario and he said they've all fallen in love sure, with you. But John, no, he's too small. That <laughs> was the best. <laughs> the best. And then Tyrion looks sad and she's like, no, I mean, but so, like, he's the first one to bring it up even, so I'm not sure. I think it's still what Sloan was saying, that as an advisor, love is always, I mean, especially Daenerys. Danger. 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 Now he doesn't. Know I hope it wasn't related. two front row of a seat. <laughs> Drink for that. Well, I think it also still comes down to that's what makes me wonder more about what did Tyrion say to Cersei? Like, what deal did they make? Because I feel like him looking at me like, did he just betray them? Can I I don't know. We'll, we'll, well have to see. Well, I, I will say this, because I, I said this last year, but, you know, I always thought this maybe referred to uh, Danny's nephew, who's only a book character. But in, in the uh, prophecy, when she gets cursed, she says, you will not bear another child until the yeah. sun rises in the west. I've always thought that was a metaphor. And I always thought, oh, well, Aegon or Ares Good. or whatever his name is, is going to go to Westeros and say, I'm the king. But now I didn't really think about it. Now John can be the son that rises he, to the West. Mm -hmm. once he he's, rose once to power in Westeros. He's the son of Rhaegar Targaryen. And then he bent the and knee then to he her. And with Danny. And what, so what, well, no, because <laughs> no, John. <laughs> John rose to power in Westeros, and then he bent the knee. He set at Eastwatch. So if that's and then also it was you know it's like well. 
Who said you couldn't have children? That woman that murdered your husband and unborn baby? Like, Super has she... Reliable. Yeah. That's and I don't think Danny's reliable. been actively trying to get pregnant Pure since then. Source. So, like... Sorry, she's been pretty yeah. active. She's not, not been trying, but... <laughs> Right, but there's the whole Targaryens breeding with anybody outside their line theory. Mm -hmm. We already talk about that. That's why uh, Lyanna died. That's why, um, what's her name, died? Mm -hmm. No, no, she was, yeah. That still doesn't prevent her pregnancy. No, that's fair. Well, no. Um, I I have a question that's sort of not really a prediction, but uh, it is relating to this season. Okay, who thinks that... Danny is the princess that was promised. Yeah. Nobody thinks that Danny okay. is the princess that was promised. Who thinks it's John? Who thinks John is the prince that was promised? Okay. So, okay, well, here. Who right. thinks it's their kid? No. Nobody. Okay. Here, actually, okay, hold on. We need to get to final predictions now because we're running on time. But actually, so one thing I ha- I always thought about was this is everyone was shocked when like Ned Stark died and Robert Baratheon died. Like all of the parents died and like game of thrones is a story about the children it started like all of our main characters now daenerys john sansa Arya, everyone they were all children when this story began and it's the story of them growing up and becoming pretty much their parents more or less i mean in terms of leadership and stuff so like i think it's very possible that however this story ends it might basically end with their children so, but um, not Cersei's though. Yeah. All right. So that brings us to the question. So, who do y'all think in the in the final final end game? Who is going to sit on the Iron Throne? Get out! <laughs> <laughs> no, no, come back, come back, come back. <laughs> Danny. Pregnant. Pregnant. Pregnant Danny. Danny. John. John. Bron. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, he didn't want it. <laughs> well, and, but the, here's the. I'm sorry. John that's, is the song of fire Andrew's and ice. That's theory as yeah. well. He is he is fire because he's a Targaryen. He is a Stark. He's fire and ice. But now, he, considering how she goes on and on about her rightful place as the ruler of the of Westeros, it's not. Who do you think that she will then like go? Well, as soon as John, as soon as John is is exposed for the rightful heir to the throne. Do you think Danny will then not be a, a little hypocritical about it and yeah. just step aside and go, "Oh, I thought it was me, they but no, it's you." Well, if they get <laughs> married, I don't think she's gonna survive long enough. Yeah. Well, because there was survive. also this thing that Dario said to her when they were um, riding back to Marine with the Dothraki. He said to her, "You were not made to sit on a chair. You are a conqueror." Yeah. So it might just be she's just there to do the conquering. And then, but maybe John is the true leader. I don't even will... know if John's going to survive, honestly. That's why they're going to have think, a baby. Like, m- my. I'm almost absolutely sure that John is the prince I was promised, and that he's going to have to end up killing Danny, like, like the original Ezra. He had to stab his sword. No, see, I think he already. I think he already did that with Egret. I think he's already done that. He with didn't kill Egret, Egret though. But his actions led to Egret's death. Uh, no. Ollie his men. Man's Buck raiders Ollie. actions. Fuck, Fuck Ollie. Ollie. <laughs> Ollie killed Egret. Fuck Ollie. Sorry. Here's my prediction. My prediction, as far as who's going to sit on the Iron Throne at the end, is that there will be no Iron Throne at the end. That's the only way that you end a story of this scope. Yeah. That you'll have seven kingdoms. Is again. you'll have you, you will have they'll bring in democracy. It's it's Let's the change the from kingdoms. royalty to to a more democratic way of life. And I think that the only way you finally end this battle for the Iron Throne is to get a dragon to burn that thing down. Well, because the way it was put together. remember um, Daenerys' vision from the House of the Undying, she walked, she saw the Iron Throne there covered in snow and or ash, and the ceiling was destroyed as if burned by a dragon or... Uh, maybe an ice dragon. Or maybe oh, an yeah. ice dragon. Only you know. Well, I guess my, my biggest prediction is, is, uh, is I think Jamie. No, it's hard for me to say who will live and die because it's it's George R. R. Martin. We and it, and it's the finale. Get ready for some death. Anyone can die at the end. I think that Jamie will will complete his hero's journey 
of redemption. By killing Cersei? By maybe killing Cersei, or just by being a hero in the war. That's or, the other or, part or, of the, that's the other, ooh, oh yeah. Ooh, are we or there is, brother, there is right. the fun idea that the only other person left on Arya's list is Cersei. And if Jaime is going out into the wilderness, what if Arya found Jaime, took his face, goes back to King's Landing, and kills Cersei as Jaime. We got real drunk one night and okay. came up with a... Yes. Yeah. She is the Mad Queen, right? And he killed the Mad King. Yeah. But, but I do think Jaime will be reunited with Brienne. If not, if, if not as just his comrades. Maybe or you'll get your wish, Brittany. <laughs> or there is another line that Arya said um, when can she I, was. Can I pause real quick? We have ten minutes left in our, our panel, and we are going to do a raffle at the end of it. I know we had a bunch of people come in afterwards, so if you have not gotten a raffle ticket, please raise your hand. We're going to continue the conversation, but Zach's going to pass them out for you, and you can hand them out. Okay. We have there should be pens and, yeah, floating and about, and we can give you some more pens. But, all right. All right, so uh, when Arya was still in Braavos, um, what is that, Lady Crane? I love that actress. Um, she said, well, if you leave Braavos, where will you go? And Arya said, Essos is east, Westeros is west, but what's west of Westeros? I mean, considering this is a story, or not a story about good triumphing over evil, I mean, who knows? The walkers may win this yeah. war. And what if the West entire land like is demolished and it actually ends with just all the survivors getting on a ship and sailing west of Westeros? Because that was also the... Thank you, J.R. Token. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, that was also the story of uh, Princess Nymeria in the history of Westeros is that was where she came from. She, they were living in Essos and they were fleeing the Valyrians and she gathered up 10,000 ships and all of her people sailed to Westeros. And I think that either way, whatever goes down in Westeros, I think that that's going to be Arya's like future. I think no matter what goes down, she's not going to stay in rule. If the war is over, she doesn't need to. No, no. Anybody can die at this point. Anybody. I think at minimum, Arya might be like, "Yo, hey, Queen Sansa, Danny, King John, nice knowing (laughs) you. I'm going to go take the ship Mm -hmm. and see what happens." Yeah. Interesting side note, I was looking at the preview chapters for the mythical book that's coming out. Anybody uh, still real angry about the next book not uh, coming out? (laughs) We're not going uh, there. it, according to the chapter that was released, drink your hate, my friend. Drink Arya is actually a, becomes a member of that theatrical company, and she plays Sansa in their play. All right, uh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. I have one more thing I wanted to. Okay, one of my. Uh, we still have some time. Yeah, I, I know we have a couple minutes. Um, so one of my uh, biggest trivia questions. Uh, we did this last year. If you were here last year, don't answer it. It was well. No, here this time I'm gonna do the top three. Okay. So obviously this is a show about people killing lots of people, so many deaths. So the question is, which character, or we'll do what the top three characters who kill the most people? Wait, let me clarify. Let me clarify. Now, for example, when Joffrey said, "I want Ned Stark executed," that does not count as Joffrey killing him. That counts as Illyn Payne, the executioner, who actually no, no. According this, to this, and this particular question, this trivia so question. someone who literally goes up and kills someone, not oh, I order you to kill all so these people. So Cersei killing everybody in the. Action. So yes, who do you think? Does, does that mean that the kid that stabbed Lancel in the cellars is the one that killed all the people in Sept Bayless? Mm, no, we don't know who set up the candle. Or do we? So we don't. Well, uh, well, Cersei didn't do it herself. So who killed the most people? Whose action, physical action, led to the most right. death? The I do have Jon Snow in like the top ten, but he's not in the top three. The number one is people. actually kind of pretty. Who else? Anyone? Bueller? Yes. Faceless men. But do we see them? Do we see that happen? Like we need to see it on screen. Okay. The hound is the hound is a the good hound choice. is up there, but not in the top three. He really didn't kill a lot of people directly. He would just like sick his dogs on them. Now yeah. we're not counting animals, otherwise Drogon would win yeah, hands that's... down. Oh. Jor is a good good choice. You got to go all the way back. 
The night. Oh, the night. Oh, uh, no, because well, there's so many of them, and they all kind of kill. It, there is a singular person who kills the most people. All right, we're, let's answer. Yeah, okay. Do you have Oh, you were okay. You know it. I'm so, Aria. Aria is number three. Uh, we see on screen she kills at least sixty people. About ten people we see her kill, and then there's at least fifty people at the twins. So yes, number three is Aria at about sixty. Number two. Number two is Kyburn. Kyburn would have been the one who lit the candle. That kills the sept, and that's about. They said you can fit 700 people in the sept, and since Kyburn would not trust that to anyone else, and he was down in the catacombs, so he did that. Number one is Braun. Yes, during the Battle of the Black Water, he fired the arrow that burned the ships. Which, nerd alert! I watched that frame for frame and counted how many people were on that ship, <laughs> and how many ships there were. There were at least. 40, I mean, so there's at least 40 people per ship and at least 20 ships, so that comes to about 800 people. So With one arrow. There's my nerd out. Mm. Do we want to do the raffle? We want to get the raffle. And, all right, yeah. we, we are raffling off a uh, beautiful blue t-shirt that I'm wearing here. Modeling. No, that I want to draw the name. Can I draw a name? Uh, <laughs> uh, and also, I got some Harry Potter pins in there as well. So fun little okay. stuff. Support the Knights of the Dragon. So watch. the fabulous winner is TJ. TJ? It, uh, it has to be present to win. TJ Jones. It must be present to win. Do we have a TJ? The only one? TJ Jones. All right. Nope. nope. Okay. okay. Only another one. Elliot. Is that what it is? Hey! Yay! Good job, Elliot. Oh. Uh, just, Anything anybody desperately shirt. wants to say? <laughs> <laughs> How many thousands of dollars are in that dragon, Ark? <laughs> uh, I will say that he probably cost me at least two months' rent. <laughs> I lost count. He has a nice house. But no, but that, that also counts me like rebuilding him once and all the tools that I bought for that too. So it's just, if I built a second one, I could build it much cheaper. Uh, we will be continuing this conversation. We have another Game of Thrones panel tomorrow night at 6.30. Um, so we're going to be discussing some of the same things. Overnight, you realize you came with some wonderful ideas. You can bring them back. Yes. Yeah, you may please. also come to our, we have a booth downstairs. I mean, they're closed We will nerd out tonight. with you. But if you want to come by the table, I can chat Game of Thrones forever. So. And you can uh, and take a picture. The thing is we are on YouTube. That's what we do is we do this kind of weekly about the shows that we're watching. We have a live chat after we watch the show. Um, right now we're watching Westworld. So if anyone's watching Westworld yeah. and really wants to talk about stuff, feel free to join us. We are at Nice of the Drunk Watch or at bit.ly B-I-T dot L-Y slash K-O. We have it written down right here. So, <laughs> right. We also so, have several we, podcasts out yeah. there. Uh, we, got a lot of, we, just, we like to talk, apparently, if you haven't guessed that. So if you enjoy <laughs> And this, drink. Yeah. And drink. And There's drink. always drinking. Okay, so we're going to do our, our closing. Oh, so we are the Knights of the Drunk Watch. And now, and now our, our talk, talk has, has ended. ended. Thank you, Thank you so guys, much for coming. Much. We're so happy to have you. We'll also be doing Stranger Things tomorrow, American Horror Story panels, and uh, skirt, more Game please. of Thrones. <laughs>